All right. Let's go to the next business. I can't wait for going through all the businesses we have here. So our next one. Uh, um, we have a question. You want to answer the question for this type of yeah, business? Yeah, I saw the question. That is more belonging to here, professional oh, okay. service company. Okay. So I think we are going to answer it at the very last uh, bullet point. Okay. And so I already put that in there for us to not forget. So mm -hmm. the first question I collected, okay. I've been, to prepare this seminar, I've been calling people to say, hey, are you okay with your IT to prompt them up to talk to me about what their need is? So the, the client said that I do not know how much money is needed to send my employee to work from home. I have five. That's what, uh, this is a, actually, this is a, a professional service company. They are dealing with papers like CPA firm. So Derek, and I want you to give some thought on this one and tell me, and how much money do I need to do this? Okay, uh, five employees, I assume they not have to, uh, they, not, they don't need to the service guarantee for 24 seven. So they can absorb some downtime in emergency or in accident. And if they say, okay, if down one minute or two minutes is not my issue, that's okay. And then I will say total, total uh, device you need, hardware you need to spend is just $50. And uh, you need just uh, two hours for the, for the labor. How do that? How do you, can we do that? Well, we're so using what, what did you say? You said that for $50 and the two hours of uh, IT person's labor, mm -hmm. you will get that done? Yeah, it's uh, the two hours of the setup. Um, I would say the, yeah, I think that is, uh, if you don't need any other computers and uh, you have all the computers ready, then that will be enough. Okay, explain to us in details. Okay. Okay. And uh, the first requirement is your office and each of employees home have to ha have to have the internet connection. And if we if everyone has the internet connection that is uh, you meet the requirement. And then you need to buy um 50 to 80 dollars router. That is probably um uh, you need to buy, you need to spend on the hardware. And then... But uh, Derek, uh -huh. but Derek uh, I knew the router, you said $50, but that's so cheap. Are you sure it's not $5,000? No, actually, the if uh, 10 years before, that would be the $1,200 at least. $1,500 or a couple thousand dollars for that kind of a router is a very normal price. But nowadays, the uh, price is dropping uh, extremely. It's um, unbelievable. I I already have the router. Mm, one here. This one. Okay. Only is that this a $50? small. Dealer. Yeah, this is a fifty dollars. They do the very well jobs for your remote access work. Mm. And this is a secure one, and mm -hmm. uh, uh, we. That is the cheapest one. That's why I put the fifty dollars as a minimum because I do have that one. I had I tested it and it works fine. Uh, that is the secret. <laughs> okay, so you mean community CPA is using that too? Hmm. I not say yes. <laughs> <laughs> oh my god. Okay, as long as it's secure. Okay, we're good. Yeah. <laughs> Okay, and uh, two hours, uh, two hours time mostly is for this device configuration. And uh, okay. after two hours, you have ability to connect from your home. Actually, not only from your home, is from anywhere with internet service. That is so cool. And uh, also, it's a secure. Mm, great. So, so I was saying, no, there is no way to say that it's too expensive. All right. So I should. So my first question, the answer to my client is that uh, you can do it. Let's say two hours of IT workers' time is four hundred dollars. Four hundred fifty is done. Yeah, for sure. 
yeah, okay. So the next question, my local server is not stable. And to move my local data to a cloud-based server, what are the steps? So I'm not an IT person. I just know that people talk about cloud, cloud, cloud. I still have a server in my basement. And how do I do that? I, I can't bring my server and shoot it in the rocket to the cloud so the server stay on top of there. No, I know it is something you guys do. Explain to us in the plain Chinglish, please. Okay. Yeah. Um, for the put your local to cloud and you need to first uh, plan. Second, do it, uh, make it implement. The first plan you need to think about, you need to find out how much uh, uh, transaction volume you need to have per month. You never uh, worry about the transaction volume one is in local because local you have a switch you have a cable connected you don't count how many how many bits or how many uh, how many megabits you you spend per month but when you go to the cloud the cloud will charge you the data transaction so you need to know before you move to the cloud otherwise you will you may crying later on <laughs> okay and uh, that is the one. The other thing is you need to know how fast speed you want to compute power. The basically um, in plain English, okay, is uh, you want a i3 CPU or i5 CPU or i7 CPU for your desktop. If you think mm, I'm i5 is good enough, so that is a medium level of the compute uh, power. And if you say, oh, i3 is good for me too. I don't, I don't do uh, multiple uh, the spreadsheet calculating all those things. i3 is working for me. I'm working on i3. Then you know, maybe it's a lower end uh, compute power will be okay. The reason we need to determine that one because different server uh, in the cloud, you rent server, different compute power have different price. We want, we optimize your dollar to make the dollar most powerful. And um, the next one, after you determine this one, and then you need to find out who will be your cloud service provider. The famous one is uh, Amazon and AWS, right? And the other one is uh, Microsoft Azure. So which one you like? They do have a different uh, ability and um, very depend on what your needs and what your current server layout. If you are the Windows server, probably you'll go to the Azure. If you are working a lot on the Linux, on the computing, probably you'll go to the AWS. Certainly the Windows server can go to the AWS too. Uh, very depend on your situation. Uh, after you determine this, you're planning good, and then you say, okay, I'm on the cloud. Then you need to hire a system administrator or the cloud administrator like me. Okay. And uh, do they have and, to look like you or they're just like, I'm just kidding. <laughs> <laughs> and after, after you planning done, you have the cloud administrator or the, the system administrator, they can virtualize your server. That mm. is the only downtime you need to uh, facing. That means when they doing the uh, virtualizing and your server have to be offline, your uh, system is not connected to the server and uh, you have to let server run around, but depending on what the size of your server. If your regular size, like uh, you have a 1T hard drive server, probably take around two or three hours and then that virtualization, virtualization will done and then the, the, the administrator will upload your virtualization package to the cloud and then relay out your network, uh, network infra infrastructure. That is uh, the other important thing is uh, your existing infrastructure, how to connect from a local and to the cloud. So this is, uh, after that one done, 
you're on cloud. You're 24 hour on and you're weatherproof, bulletproof, and earthquake proof, <laughs> <laughs> everything proof. <laughs> because all well, those uh, systems is in the data center is underground or somewhere <laughs> safe. But what about the cloud is down? Uh, it's really hard to say the cloud is down because um, uh, it will be raining if it is down. <laughs> yeah, because they have uh, your virtualization, when your virtualization upload to the cloud, it's not only in the one place, in the one server, in the one data center, no. They are multiple, uh, multiple different places. Maybe it's in the, um, uh, California, you have uh, one, and in the New York, you have the other one, and in the Australia, you have the other one, you have mm -hmm. three. And one down, you maybe use the other two, or the other, the, the, the farthest one. Only the problem is, it, it may be a little slow, but always on. Mm. But uh, certainly, if you, your configuration has a problem, your IT infrastructure design has a problem, that is your fault, it's not the cloud fault. Mm. <laughs> so that's why you need to have a, a better uh, cloud designer, the IT infrastructure design, to make sure you have a good infrastructure, healthy infrastructure, to meet your redundancy, meet your service level. So that is important. So, so Derek, um, how do we interview for a good uh, architecture for, for the cloud computing? You know what I mean? How do I know, like I, this is really a question I really asking for all the listeners right now because yeah, you can say, you, you said what you said, but when we are interviewing the service provider, what do we need to know? What, what do we ask so we don't deal with someone that doesn't really know what they're doing but giving bad advice after we went on the cloud then we realized that we're bottlenecking everything and this structure is bad? Mm, it's really hard to say uh, who is bad, who is uh, good at this point. But what uh, experience do we need to ask that person to have though? The, the thing is, the first, you have to know what you need. Okay. And then you have to know what's your three years or five years projection. That is the okay. two important things you need to know. Because and uh, if you only know now, and that will be limited to your growth. And if you, too, if you project too much growth, then it will be spent more money. Your you waste your money. So three to five years production is a good lens to, to make the plan. And the other things you need, to imp you need to ask, the one thing is how can you move between the cloud service provider? And if the, some service provider give you the cheaper price, better service, and they say, oh, it cannot be changed or you never know how to change it or how to move it from this service provider to the others. That is very, very bad selection because uh, all the uh, agreement for the ser service agreement, they have a smaller, tiny, tiny, tiny characters print. on the print. Yeah, fine prints. Say the price change object <laughs> without notice. Yeah, change any time they want it. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Oh, I know. And when you locked in, they all give, they said no terms. Okay, no terms. And then they change the price. You think that's no good. When you want to go, you want to spend, you need to spend a big money to move. So that is the, the way the people, uh, the cloud providers, uh, private service, service provider is locked, how to lock the people. Mm -hmm. So let's go to the other question, Derek, and okay. I'm watching our time too. Remote okay. working from home. Is the data safe? That's the hmm. question from a client. Yeah. So, you know, they're worried about remote working and it's not safe. Yeah, it's, uh, that is uh, very dependent on what kind of method you're using for remote access. And if you using the RDP, we call the remote desktop service, because that is a Windows uh, uh, built-in service. You don't need to pay any, any dollar. And then you can start to use it. But so that what is one, that again? Is that RDP? 
R D P yes is a remote desktop protocol or, or okay. pro, yeah or process. But uh, okay. this one is free. But uh, a lot of the hacker is aimed on this one. As long as you open that port, you allow this one to remote connect the attacker or the hacker or the attack people will smelling it and coming to attack you. Okay. This is a, a free but a less secure one. And the other thing uh, is I recommend it is a VPN. When we talk about the VPN, a lot of people were thinking, wow, VPN. I am no need to jump in the uh, blocker to seem like the Chinese people want to use VPN to access the outside the world the website web page yeah yeah no, they call that, that jumping is, over the wall yeah. yeah that is not that is just one of the vpn function it's only for jumping the uh, the bypass the security setting but uh, yeah. that is a one of the vpn uh function the real things the vpn i i wanted to describe the vpn is vpn is a a long 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 network cable through in the internet. The reason to that is because VPN is a virtual private network. It's a big private network. Okay. Yeah, it's built a tunnel inside of the internet and all your own data is only in that tunnel and sent from your end to the server end or it's the, like the, a visible cable. Yes. It's a visible cable. Yes. Yeah. A visible cable. So that is secure. And especially okay. suddenly the VPN uh, have a different protocols. They have uh, open VPNs, they have a L2TP, they have a IPsec, they have a PPTP. And the most popular one now is open VPN. But uh, I don't recommend to use open VPN because open VPN is uh, encrypted only the 128. I recommend is uh, L2TP and uh, IPsec. That is 256 bits. That is the most longest bits that, for the inscription. Same like the bank. Your bank card, your bank transactions, you, all of them is 256 bits. So what was that again? Can you say it slow so people can write it down? Is <laughs> L2 what? L2TP. It's a level TP. two TP. Yeah, T like Tom, P like Peter. Okay. And, and so, the, other, uh -huh. the, other, so, the other same level is uh, IPsec. IP IPsec? SEC. No, SEC. I see, see, sec. Yeah. I see. So can I just kind of describe it in my understanding is that okay. VPN is a, is a long cable and but the open VPN, the, the cable inside of the cable, the encryption is less. But mm -hmm. the one you're saying, the encryption is more. So whatever data going through the private tunnel and it will have more encryption. Is that right? Yes. Even the people listening on your cable and got your bit, but because you have inscription, encryption, they cannot decrypt it. They cannot see what is your password inside of something. Mm -hmm. Only the key. Yeah, that's more details. Only have uh, the yeah. key to yeah, yeah, end yeah. have a key and then don't they give, can read don't it. Don't give us too much information <laughs> either. And we just want to know like enough that to be dangerous. You know, okay, we, yeah, don't want yeah. to, we don't want to be you. And uh, so can we be 100% paperless? That is a law firm's attorney's question to me. Okay, I will say 100% now is achieved, no problem. And uh, before, I think, actually, I think now, now time, everyone in the office, maybe already is half uh, or the partially paperless. Because when you have uh, uh, the things, uh, uh, like your uh, statements or things login uh, uh, coming in, you scan it or from the bank. You even say, okay, I don't want a paperless. They send you the PDF file. You save that in your hard drive or your uh, thumb, thumb, thumb drives to store. That is a partially paperless already. And uh, during, uh, in the office, most hardest parts for the paperless, against the paperless is a signature. And yes. before, yeah, before we have a, a couple couple types of the uh, e-signature, digital signature, and uh, uh, yeah, e-signature and digital signature, but uh, not a lot of people using it because there is no high demanding. But now uh, COVID nineteen is is here, and uh, a lot of people starting to 
have a headache about the signature. Now you can see they have a lot of uh, e-signatures uh, website. Uh, the company is uh, uh, blooming, like the um, sign uh, booming. Okay, mm -hmm. it's uh, like the the old one is a uh, uh, dog uh, sign, and uh, also is a uh, Adobe sign. And now they have a sign. Now they have a panda dog. They have. Um, what I call the D design, all of them is a company is a is a provide their service for digital sign, and now and also there's a legalized digital sign already. That means the digital sign can be applied to the court, to the tax to return form, to any of the legal legal documents, even the notary or those things, but a little difficult part I think will be getting better later on is uh, not, there is no unique uh, DD sign approved there because uh, some government only, not, only accept the DD sign, some have uh, only assigned the acro sign and uh, different brand have a different department to uh, approve. So you need to know when you have, when you're starting to use the DD sign, you need to, uh, when you're starting to use the E sign, you need to know which department allow which brand of the D design? Mm. But uh, I think after the people get use of the the COVID nineteen the lifestyle, <coughs> they will have the unique one. Yeah, and um, okay. So then the the last one on the professional service side is a question I received: is what would you recommend for a professional trainer that need to uh, contact people and helping customer to to be virtually operating. Um, the professional trainer uh, to virtually is not a um, not the new concept. Actually, is uh, already have a model. They do the only the hard part is uh, convince people to allow you do the virtual training. Because the, yeah, because the people think, oh, if a real person beside me, I, I want to do it. If the just a just a big screen in front of me, I maybe can do some later, ten minutes <laughs> <laughs> tomorrow, the day after tomorrow. That they, they like easily. Me. <laughs> <laughs> oh my god. <laughs> um, the deep personal trainer is uh, now is have a good idea is with their uh, digital band. Uh, to monitoring, and they can have a more uh, ability to do the um, to do the help or to do the plan to do the schedule to follow to make sure the people follow the schedule. And uh, but the helper or the or the protection, the personal protection is a little bit hard. That is the uh, draw part. Okay. So I have a question related to this section as well. It says that for community CPA firm, how much do you pay for IT support monthly? What a great question. And because, okay, because the IT support, because Derek is here, so I guess I don't pay anything. <laughs> yeah, I, I seal my air. <laughs> but I want to say this to you. I started this um, uh, digital ties, cloud computing concept for community CPA back in 2007. So I just recently added up all my IT bills that I paid. That time, not all the bill went to Derek. Derek was helping mm -hmm. me do the structural design, but I am actually hiring people here in the US to help me to do that. I spent total of $2.1 million. So that is a real dollar amount. And uh, right now I'm actually paying a third party, not Derek, but I'm paying third party about 150 to 100, uh, 200,000 a month. But remember we are much larger uh, service provider. We have 9,000 clients in our database and we have uh, 25 professionals are full time on the work. So that may not be the, the, the good rele relevant uh, number for, for you to look at if you're just looking at doing it now. But at least you know that over 15 years I spent 2.5 million. That's how much more work I did in order me to be here 
at the COVID-19 time, able to farm out everybody back home within three months time. So that kind of give you an idea. And our next, uh, Derek, we have literally 10 minutes left, but I really need you to go through this one. Can you work on retail owners question? So how easy can I create a no person contact retail store? I mean, I go in to get my stuff and I pick up my stuff without seeing anyone helping me social distance in this best. So this question actually coming from a very small retail store. They are retailing, they're retailing novelty things and not uh, grocery. So their things are pretty, um, it, it, it's, it's managed easier and they want to create a no contact store. They're, they meant to, uh, baggage things up, leave it in place. So the customer knows that they order number one, they shop around the store, they look at things, then they come to pick up their things. So Derek, can you explain how that can be done? I'm not talking about Amazon virtual store. I'm talking about a real teeny small business stores. Yeah, this is a good question. And uh, actually when I see the Amazon store, the people can just uh, grab things and then walk out the store and then the, your charge will be on your, on, on your credit card or on your device. That is so fancy. And um, for now, we only need is a personal distance. And uh, we, we need to keep social distance. We need no personal contact. So for this way, we first, certainly we need to have um, a web store. Have to have a web store and all your items have to be in the web store. And um, same like the, the previous uh, samples I give, I give, and uh, you need to have uh, internet access. You need For to the have restaurants, web. right? Like yeah, the one like we talk about yeah. restaurants. Okay, okay, let's jump that part because we only have five minutes. And, um, and then in your store, every single items, you only need one item as a sample. And then the sample, beside of sample, you have to have the barcode. That means every single item, you have to have a barcode. That barcode will be stored in the database. And then the people can use their cell phone on your website, on, on your website, on your credit online store. Use your website, on, they use their cell phone, they can scan the item and then to put it into their cart. Certainly if, they, if you think your customer maybe don't have a, a, a phone on hand, you can provide some device, scan, scanner device, and uh, just to send out the order through the internet and to to reach you uh, to reach your back door, and uh, then after the scan is checked out, you will receive on the back, and then on your big screen you know which customer ordered which things, and then you can start into pack. After the pack, you can either if you go if you have a, enough investment, you can put the auto locker store and. Uh, give them the code, let them punch the code, the door will auto automatically open, and then you can grab things. Or if you say, I don't want to invest any anything, you can just have a room, and then just tell the, uh, when the customer finished, you put their things inside of the room and tell them, okay, ready for pickup, they will open the door to, open the other door to take it out. So that will be basically online store, and a payment method you have to have, and then the, Ordering system, ordering system, this include your pickup system. The let people know how and when and what the number they, they should pick up. And after these three things, rest things is same like the uh, restaurant. Mm -hmm. So then, um, so related to that, I have another client and they have a bookstore with a cafe in the, in the bookstore in the past. And so um, my client was asking me, um, she's thinking about moving, uh, uh, move to be an online store for the bookstore part. Um, so how easy is that to move to online? Then she was also wondering what's going to happen to the cafe part. Um, that is a really good question. And um, book part is very easy. Same like the uh, uh, delivery, uh, delivery service because every single book should have barcode already. So it's ready to implement and the picture is already easy to get from, uh, from outside. Cover, yeah, yeah, from book cover. So there is no difficulty at all for online book sale. But the hardest part is cafe. And probably... 
they can sell the coffee powder <laughs> or instant <laughs> coffee, or maybe they thinking they can sell instead of coffee is the music. <laughs> oh my god! <laughs> so basically, it is hard to accomplish that、mm. no person contact concept with a cup with a little yeah. cafe. Yeah. yeah. That will、I'm、be what we miss, isn't it? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. All right, and uh, so uh, Derek, those are the questions I collected, and、uh, I think、uh, for today's session, this is what we bring to you. And we have one minute to go, and、uh, I check the questions and we answer the questions, and know that, folks, and we are actually here, three、um, o'clock p.m. every day. Like today, we're talking about IT. Tomorrow is actually in Vietnamese and talking about all the government assistance, unemployment benefit, and all of that. So, if you happen to know someone who speaks、uh, Vietnamese、uh, with his Vietnamese English going on in life, and you want to mention to them about that and have them join us to learn more. On Thursday, and we, I will join with another staff person of our firm, and his name is Dan. We will talk about specifically how community CPAs IT works, and how to work with us、uh, to enjoy that more modern and、uh, COVID nineteen proof kind of service relationship. So we'll dive into the tools that we have as a firm. If you are a professional service company, that might be a good opportunity for you to sort of knowing what we do. I'm not saying we are the best, but we want to be the best. So hopefully, we can be the best. And here is the webinar information on our website. Go to our website, and you will see all the webinars. That is another work that Derek did. So when you click the webinar. And、you can register. You can see details, and I'll say that he spent about、uh, five hours to program that、um, program those click buttons. So made it work. So I I really think that、uh, having a brother who is in IT that is such a good benefit. All right, thank you so much for joining us. And、um, should we say goodbye? Bye bye. Bye bye.